Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tech Talk, a podcast where Amit and I talk about various technology-related topics. We don't just talk about technology on its own, but we also delve into how you can use it best and what impacts does it have in our society and everyday life. Today, we're going to talk about WordPress. WordPress was relevant and stormed the market, uh, stormed the website web design uh, area 15 years ago, and it's still relevant today. And it's been said that over 80% of all websites in the whole of internet is actually made by WordPress. It is a very powerful tool and it's really good to know about it. We would also sort of recommend that you go and uh, learn how to use it. We are not going to cover how to use it on, on our tech talk, but uh, we're going to talk about what it is and uh, you know, various aspects of it and uh, what the benefits are, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, what, what what do you think, Amit? Yeah, so thanks again, Renat, for recommending the topic. I think WordPress is quite popular. I know a lot of people who use WordPress sites. Uh, my own brother-in-law, he actually makes plugins for WordPress sites. So I know that it's quite popular and the plugin market is huge. And uh, most of the websites, as you mentioned, are actually built on WordPress. So it's a very uh, powerful technology in terms of building websites and uh, creating something for free uh, very quickly. Uh, but of course, it comes with its own challenges, uh, etc. But uh, I think you have created your own website using WordPress. Uh, so I think you would be more uh, <laughs> like uh, you, you would have more expertise uh, in answering this question, like, how do you use WordPress? And what are the challenges? And what are its strengths, etc.? Yes, yes, absolutely. I have, I have built it. And, and you know, um, on a on a related note, last week we had a guest, uh, founder of Sports Kira website, and uh, we were talking about it uh, in in that episode as well. That he also started his website that is now you know with with over a million footfall, etc. Uh, he started with WordPress. So whether you're a web designer or you're a blogger or you're an entrepreneur who is looking to looking for the next big break wordpress is definitely something you will come across you've already probably come across and if not then you definitely should know more about it and this is the right place to start it so yeah wordpress is um in 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 very basic terms in a nutshell wordpress is a um crm uh, I don't think uh, it's it's a CMS CMS content CMS management. yes yes that it is content management. Um, so it's a CMS tool. Uh, it's primarily or when it started, it was made for you know uh, designing blogging websites uh, and blog was quite big back then before um, internet was um, sort of speedy enough to handle sort of uh, media and pictures etc. Before that, we were. It was more more text based, and people were blogging a lot or wanting to blog. And WordPress uh, gained popularity at that time. It's a it's a sort of a backend software, if, if I want to call it a software, that you installed in uh, that you install on your hosting platform. And once you install it, you don't have to do the tedious and complex HTML coding, the CSS part of it. And it helps you, you know, by by um, by integrating a lot of JavaScript plugin as well. So you can create beautiful uh, websites with a lot of features, including shopping carts, payment gateway, as well as you know how to make it look good with galleries and slideshows and videos and everything. You can do all within WordPress. And WordPress gives you a very easy to sort of no code, uh, a very easy to understand and sort of figure out uh, sort of workspace where you can basically create your own account and um, sort of write your blog, design your pages and sort of put everything together within it. So, you know, Absolutely, we would still, I think Amit would also agree that we you should still understand the basics of HTML or, you know, understanding the, the language and how it works on a, on a fundamental level, at least. So you don't have to actually write HTML, but you understand what is actually going in the background. So when you do give a command or do a page design in WordPress, 
WordPress is taking your visual input and writing the HTML command in the background and taking care of a lot of stuff in terms of, you know, page design and account creation and all of that. And then there are the next stage is that on top of the native WordPress theme or template, then you can install various plugins, which we can talk about a little bit more in a, in a bit. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, that is what WordPress is in a nutshell, something that will help you get your website off the ground a lot sooner than HTML coding. Yeah, I think that that summarizes it really well. But I think what I'll do is I'll I'll cover the basics. Uh, I think you've covered the high level. I'll I'll try to cover the basics. So for for the benefit of our audience, uh, the main thing to realize is that you are a website is nothing but a file, and a file is located on a a system, a computer system. Um, in this case, it's a server. Um, so you load the file on a server. And then people from around the world, they access the file on the server. And the way they do it is by typing in a URL. The URL tells where to search for that file. So that that's that's how it is. Now, and when you create that file, you cannot create like a video file and then try to access it via VLC player over internet. What you're trying to do is you're trying to access a, a HTML file, which Renat mentioned, and that is basically a website. Uh, that renders the website on the browser. So basically you are accessing that file using a browser. So you type in the URL, so that tells the location of the file, fetches the file from that location and displays it in your browser. That's what it is. Now, in order for the website to be displayed properly so that you can see the content, you use something called as a HTML. So it's a markup language. It, it tells how tells the browser how to render the website. And then CSS is basically styling. So HTML is just pure code. It'll just show text, but if you want to add style to it, say you have bullet points, you have paragraphs, you have headings, uh, you have uh, italicized Hello. words, colors, uh, columns. So those are styles, um, and uh, those can be done through uh, CSS, cascading style sheets. And then you have JavaScript. JavaScript is basically animation, dynamic content. How do I make my um, page, um, uh, with some action on it like if I click a button the color changes if I hover my uh, uh, like mouse over some element uh, it it changes visually etc etc so th there are a lot of things you can do with JavaScript I'm just giving the basic version so HTML CSS JavaScript so that powers all the websites now think of WordPress as a, a skeleton so you have the framework so I want to build a website but I don't want to bother about writing the HTML, writing the CSS, writing the JavaScript. So I create a framework. That framework has pre-built HTML, pre-built CSS, pre-built JavaScript. So it takes care of the animation. It takes care of how it looks. It takes care of the basic structure of the website. Now, of course, WordPress has different themes and you select a theme. And when Renat mentioned that you install it on your uh, hosting platform, hosting platform is nothing but where you are hosting the files. So your server could be your own system, but then if you maintain your own system, you have to worry about security, you have to worry about scaling, you have to worry about uh, availability, etc. But when you host it, when you put the file on a cloud solution or a cloud provider or any other hosting provider, that means they take care of all the things and you just put your file there. They take care of security, they take care of availability, they take care of uh, maintenance, etc. And we don't have to worry about upgrading our server versions and maintaining it on a regular basis. So they take care of everything. We just install all the files there. And then uh, we say, okay, uh, make it available at this URL. That's your domain provider. And then your website is available. So similarly with WordPress, as Rinath mentioned, you install the software on your hosting platform. And then what you do is you uh, use a theme. Uh, so Rinath, uh, for his own website, RinathMalik.com, he used a specific theme. So that took care of all the animation, that took care of all the styling. Uh, he could modify a bit, like he, you can modify the color, you can modify the things, but the overall skeleton is pre-built and he doesn't have to do a lot. And then what he does is he replaces all the content. So when you have a framework, you just have to replace the content in it. So the framework will say, this is the header, but the header could be Renat Malik or Amit Sarkar. 
so that's a header then it will have content so content could be a bio so a bio of renat malik work experience and then images could be five uh, his certifications uh, players conferences where he has spoken at etc and then he can have some videos where he has given talks on youtube or he has given talks on i mean we have done podcasts so he can have those videos then he can have links which links to his linkedin profile to his twitter account to his podcast so those are all the things that he can add on the website without actually worrying about okay how it should look where should it be so he just updates the content and everything gets populated automatically so he doesn't have to worry about publishing now in contrast to that you can build a pure html website which i did uh because i wanted to learn the basics as rinath mentioned it's good to know the basics because when you know the basics then you can build on top of it it's like lego blocks um so when you know the basics of lego blocks then you can develop more and more stuff on it so i learned the basics but it was very hard and uh, to maintain my website i have to modify a single piece of code every single time so if even if it's like a very simple thing i'll have to modify it on like 20 different pages etc so like if i have to modify a header i have to modify it on all pages it doesn't take care of modifying the header on all pages so so yeah so i mean you learn but then you lose because the maintenance is quite heavy so i don't update my website very frequently my website is not very dynamic i don't accept payments i can't accept uh, people can't contact me so i don't have a contact form rinath's website has a contact form he didn't even have to do any coding for it some people just put a content and the, he will get an email so he doesn't have to even configure any of this but i have to which i haven't so so yeah there there it goes it it tells you in a in a short form like the difference between a normal website built using just pure coding and something like wordpress and that's why it's so popular yes yes absolutely that was that was really good example about uh, both of our websites in one of them is in wordpress and one of them is in html so yeah as as you were saying that um you know to to be able to write the whole website and nowadays websites has so many features dynamic responsive you know it it detects whether it's on mobile or we or being viewed on desktop all of these things if you were to write everything of these in html it will take not even weeks or months i think it will take years to even write uh, not yet maybe not uh, multiple years but a whole year of like concentrated it will be difficult to maintain i think building once is easy but it's uh, difficult to maintain well, on a long basis i think even building is is so much more time consuming um because i have in 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 my website i have so many things like graphics you know animation know. Know. all of these things and it took me a week and that's because i was being a perfectionist to sort of i kind of like delved into like learning all the options of wordpress so that's why it took me a long time but you could actually get a wordpress website up and running functioning and d- doing less than basic- half a day less than half a day yeah 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 exactly so if, if you know uh, so um if you were thinking about sort of building a website for any reason um i think it's a you know after this talk uh, we would recommend that you don't need to hire or any hire anyone a freelancer or anyone which a lot of people do a lot of entrepreneurs and business minded people have an idea and they want to have a website and then they go to various freelancing websites like upwork or uh, fiverr and then they hire people to do something that they can do without any knowledge of codes within half a day or even less because you know sometimes you just need a one page website just to showcase your product your product is something else um so for that i would say that after you guys uh, you know talk you know listen to this talk i think you'll have this con- confidence that you can just do it yourself and let me let me in in this scenario let me just go through the steps so for that uh, as amit was uh, covered a little bit already and we covered it in many different of our episodes in domains and websites and all of that and we encourage you to check those out as well but just in a very like sort of step by step very um, uh, quickly so you need a domain which is the .com or .dot whichever uh, domain that people will type to go to your website you need to buy that and then you need to have a hosting platform and there are many like godaddy bluehost and hostinger etc cetera, etc cetera. um and once you have those in your hosting uh, platform um 
you basically have this storage space in cloud where you can put anything that you like. You can write the tedious, you can do the tedious way of writing the HTML code. For that, you need to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, et cetera, et cetera. So you don't have time for that. If you don't have time for that, then uh, within the hosting platform, usually there is an option, install WordPress. And as soon as you do, it will just, you know, within minutes, set up and install WordPress within minutes your website is already up and running and you can go to you know abc.com and uh, you know you know your domain name and then see that it's a placeholder uh, website there is nothing the content is not something updated yet because you still have to do that but it, it, you can go there and something will come up and then you basically, uh, once the WordPress is installed, you, through your uh, hosting platform, you can go to the back end of the WordPress uh, website. And through the back end, there is very like, um, you know, a, a good user interface where they ask you what would be the title of the website and you type the title, update the upload, they'll say upload the logo, you upload the logo, and then they say what would be the bio, what would be the blog. And you have very easy to understand intuitive um, sort of uh, interface where you fill out all the details and voila, your website is ready to, I mean, if it's a static website, but then if you want to move one step further, which you will do eventually when you do this, this far, you'll see, oh, what else can I do? And um, now WordPress has this new sort of reformed way of designing websites, which they're calling calling Gutenberg blocks. So basically, you can basically have very various blocks that you can basically just drag and drop into your website from their interface, and then drag and drop. And then they have many settings. You just put those details in the settings, like if you want to sort of embed a YouTube video, or if you want to have a gallery of a few pictures, you just upload those pictures and say, oh, make this a gallery. There is a gallery block. There is a YouTube embedding block. There is many, many blocks. There is a paragraph block. There is a sort of a heading block or a slideshow block. And you can just literally drag and drop and design your website that way. Now, imagine you need, you want something more complicated. And then like, for example, you want to have a form, contact form where people can write their name and message and click send. And it should come to you. So for that, you want to go to plugins. So plugins is another section within the WordPress backend, you'll see. And there are like thousands and thousands of plugins, which are free and there for you to just click select and install and activate. And then it's part of your website. And then there are plugins to sort of do all sorts of activities, um, including contact form, that's one thing. And then analytics, like you, you wanna see how many people are coming to your website from which countries, etc. So you install a plugin for that. And then there is anti-spam plugin. So people can't spam your website with sort of, uh, you know, comments, etc. You, you can manage that. So all of these, you know, there are paid and free plugins, but most of most, if not all the activities you want to do in a website, you could probably get away with free plugins. Because if one plugin has, you know, five things free and then the next five things are paid, you'll find another plugin where the other five are free. Or you can have a combination of 10, 20 different plugins, which each has one or two features which are free and that's that's what you're utilizing or you can pay um you know if you want to if you don't want to deal with managing 20 different plugins and install and update and all of that you can just you know maybe pay one well-rounded plugin where all of those features are but uh yeah there are you know plugins kind of makes everything possible because there are shopping cart plugins there are payment gateway plugins there are you know, live update plugins. So there is nothing that you can think of that you've come across on the internet that is not possible in WordPress. Everything is through plugins. So uh, yeah, I'm um, hopefully after after this talk, uh, viewers and listeners, you won't have to sort of, uh, um, you'll have the courage and confidence to try it out for yourself. You don't need any, any you know, specialist technical knowledge. You'll 
uh, certainly be able to do it by by yourself. If you've come this far to reach our Tech Talk podcast, you should be able to build your own website. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think while you were talking, I just remembered that there is a very nice analogy which I just came up in my head. It's uh, to do with buildings. So when you create a building, you have to think about plumbing, you have to think about the paint, you have to think about electricity, you have to think about uh, ventilation, fire extinguishing, fire safety, a lot of things. And a website uh, design is something like that. So once you have the basic template and once you have the door, which is like the URL, and once you know which land it is hosted on, so it's it's uh, like a building which is on a piece of land. So your website is on a piece of uh, the internet somewhere hosted uh, and it has an address so you can reach to that location. But now you have to think about, okay, how do I do the plug uh, plumbing? How do I do the wiring of the whole website? And the website has a lot of components. So that's why you have website developers who are constantly working on fixing things and building new things in a house. Like you have, a, you want to modify your kitchen, you want to modify your living room, you want to modify your bedroom. So similarly in a website, you want to modify the contact page, the shopping cart, the payment page, etc. And that's where the developers come in. And, and as Rinath mentioned, the plugins are a system like uh, the accessory market or something like a Play Store or an App Store. So there is a big store where you can install a WordPress uh, compatible plugins um, and there is a huge market for that. Now the downside is like, I mean, of course, nothing comes for free. So when it comes for free, sometimes the, the plugin is not updated regularly. That means that if there is a vulnerability identified, which it happens quite a lot, and suppose you have a plugin that has a security vulnerability installed on your WordPress website, even though your site itself is secure, but because the plugin has a vulnerability identified and people can exploit that vulnerability, your website can now be compromised because of that vulnerability identified in the plugin. So a lot of times what happens is because again, it's 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 uh, it's similar to what happens with Windows because Windows is the most popular popular operating system. It's also the most targeted by the creators of viruses, and similarly because WordPress has the largest number of websites uh, built on it, built on its uh, technology. So that's why a lot of plugins are built on it, and then these plugins, free ones are sometimes not up updated regularly and then they get targeted. And because of that, sometimes a lot of WordPress sites have broken in the past because of these vulnerabilities, uh, usernames and passwords have been leaked, etc, etc. So of course, everything with a pinch of salt, nothing comes for free. So you have to do your due diligence, make sure that you have gone through the whole thing. It, it doesn't matter if you pay for it because in the grand scheme of things, if you're trying to sell something, you want the website to be running perfectly. Like Rinath mentioned, you need a contact form, you need a payment gateway, you need a shopping cart, you need a calendar, you need a pricing something. All these things can be created using plugins. You don't have to do anything, but you have to do it correctly so that it doesn't get compromised and your security, your customer's data or your own personal data is not leaked to the general public. Yes, absolutely. I, I agree with you um, very much in, in terms of uh, sort of paying for something, nothing comes for free because uh, yes, there are there are a lot of plugins which part of it is free, etc. But um, I'm also for uh, paying for a good plugin because uh, that makes your life so much easier. But I do want to disagree, not disagree, but show you. I mean, this is something that we do in our podcast a lot. That you know, we tell you guys about the negative sides of any technology and be extra cautious and be uh, extra aware. But um, while being aware and knowing about the weaknesses and vulnerabilities is good and it's always something that you do, but I still want to encourage that um, none of these things should sort of discourage you. Or of course, sort of, yeah. It should not yeah, discourage yeah. you. I think you should still go ahead and do it, but I think be cautious about using any new tech. It's like riding a motorbike, but don't ride without a helmet. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. But... Uh, that you know, uh, uh, going on that motorbike analogy, that also means that don't stop wanting to learn it, uh, uh it, just because it's a little bit uh dangerous. Because it is again, it is a tool that is sometimes more useful than than sort of maybe driving a car, for example. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, of course there is, there could be vulnerabilities, but right now, if you want to just start as a hobby and, you know, if, if, even if there is vulnerability, if you built a free website, just one page where it just says, hello, my name is this, um, what, what risk is there for you to lose, even if you are hacked? Because, you know, in the beginning, you know, before people knows about the website and not a lot of people will come. So and you won't have much data to lose because there is only like you know the the basic one page of of uh, very you know probably very common data um so yeah i mean there there might be you know vulnerabilities and you know uh, weaknesses with free plugins but let's let let that not deter you let's start with uh, just building a simple one page static website and then once you want to expand on it then you decide whether you want to pay for it we would say that paying is is the better option to to sort of achieve the actual objective you know you want to sell your product you know not be uh, a, a sort of a web designer so you know for that you want to you know you don't want to spend too much time managing the WordPress website. So paying for it gives you that uh, extra time. So it's yeah. always there is that benefit. But absolutely, there is even if there is vulnerability, still make it is because there is not much to lose. And if it, if it's a new website, even hackers are not really that interested because what would they get out of out of hacking you? Um, so, I but, mean, but, yeah, but, but that's, that's the same thing what businesses think and then they get hacked. <laughs> mm -hmm. Don't forget about that. A lot yes, of businesses absolutely. think, why would someone I hack mean, me? And when it's a hacked. business, when it's an operational business that's generating money, um, then obviously that, then you would have to rethink the whole WordPress thing anyway. Like for example, last, last week when we were, uh, uh, speaking to, uh, Porsche. Porsche. Kira, and he was talking about his journey that he started with WordPress and doing this. And then when he started get, getting traction, then he brought in an actual, uh, you know, his friend uh, who became the CTO, etc., who sort of, you know, took over and did, you know, moved on from WordPress to a server based, you know, AWS, etc., all of that. But that's way further down the road down right the road, now yes. if you're interested and have an idea or just want to have your own website just make it and don't think about all of these things just yet but of course with the time it comes when it you know when it comes definitely then go for the 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 better or uh, sort of more investment to save you time and effort at that time but for now yeah, definitely <laughs> go for it is, is uh, what I would say. Yeah, and I, uh, one thing I wanted to also uh, highlight here is the word static and dynamic websites. I think we have used this quite a lot, but just wanted to explain people. Static is something that doesn't change over a period of time. So you, if you go to my website, my website will always have the same content. So it's not changing every time you visit. A dynamic website is something like an Amazon.com website. Every time you visit, you have new content on it. So it's a dynamic website. So because the content keeps changing. Static website is, it's, it's the same content no matter where you log in, no matter how you, uh, uh, when you see the page, the content doesn't change uh, frequently. That's why it's called static. And dynamic is something where the content changes frequently, uh, content changes as you interact with it. So, so that's a dynamic website. And static websites are now getting very popular because it's uh, very good to have your own CV as a website. So that's why Rinath has a website. I have a website. It just goes out to show people like what you know, especially when you're working in technology, like people want to know, okay, do you have a website? I mean, you work in technology. <laughs> if you don't have a website, why do you work? So you, <laughs> you understand the basics of it, etc. So like I do t testing for websites, not testing right now. I'm a test manager, but I manage testing of different websites, mobile applications. So I need to understand all the technologies and like how to automate them. We were just talking about automation. So these things, it's good to know. But I think in the age of low code uh, things, I think it's very important to get a lot of people who don't have the technical background and still be able to build their own website. And that gives power to people. So it's freedom and power to people. So that means a lot of people who didn't have the technical knowledge can now create their own identity over the internet and shape it the way they want. 
Absolutely, absolutely. CV or it can expand into a portfolio where you can sort of showcase your projects, your work and whether it's IT related or not. Because when I had my first, uh, when I first designed RinatMalik.com, my website, I wasn't in IT industry working at all. I was a mechanical design engineer and I talked about the sort of the mechanical projects that I delivered at work. And that was something that was showcasing my work, even though it is not IT, but anyone can go and see that my expertise, what I've done, et cetera, et cetera. And they're watching it through a website that I've built with my own hand, which is another positive in, in any kind of conversation. Now in my website, I've kind of re redid everything with my current details, et cetera, and sort of modernized it with the current uh, sort of, uh, you know, the trends, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this this definitely helps you to showcase yourself, uh, making yourself as a brand, if you like uh, to go down that route. Even if none of those, uh, just having a website, whichever industry you're in, uh, would give you that extra bit of edge that, yes, you are passionate about whatever you do and you're showcasing your work. And that's uh, that's a really positive thing to do in whichever is your career. Yeah, I think and uh, because a lot of people now use smartphones, um, whenever they uh, look for a business, they look for the business website. And uh, suppose you are, you are a small business and you don't have a website, you'll hire a freelancer to do it for you. But with WordPress, you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, you'll have to think about where you want to host, where you want to buy the domain from. Uh, but those things can be easily done and it doesn't take a lot of time. You can buy domains on Google, GoDaddy. You can um, buy the hosting provider, install WordPress and then uh, build your own website and start a, like just create a simple page about what your business does, how to get in touch, etc. Because a lot of people, a lot of times when you search for a business on Google Maps, you look for a website, you look for a phone number and Google gets all these details from that. So it's, it's uh, very useful in these days to have a website. Uh, I mean, personal brand, yes, but as, as Rinath mentioned, uh, just to highlight your portfolio, to get your business out, to be more uh, available to people. And I think one of the other things uh, that gives WordPress uh, edge is also that it can, I mean, you can build a responsive website very quickly. Like f if I want to build a responsive website and what I mean by responsive is I create one single code and that code will display correctly on both a laptop, a desktop or a smartphone. And these are different screen sizes. One is uh, wide and one is long, so it's uh, it's tall. So it's so the screen sizes are different. So you have to uh, you have to wrap the content. So it means a single line um, will be displayed into multiple lines on a smartphone, but it's a single line on a say a laptop or a desktop. So yes. and and yeah. that's a responsive website. So it the website adjusts itself automatically based on the screen resolution like the screen size so let's forget about the resolution based on the screen size the website will automatically adjust itself that's a responsive website wordpress sites can do that i think out of the box i'm not sure enough correct yes me yes so yeah so it can do out of the box but for uh, a pure html website you need to have a co line of code that will make it uh, responsive of course, it will not fix all the issues. You will still have to uh, fix some of the issues using CSS, but most of the issues can be fixed with a line of code. So, so this is again very important to uh, remember because uh, you want your website to be accessible, but not just from uh, machines that are like laptops, but also on a mobile phone. Because a lot of times now we access information on our mobile phone. And I'm pretty sure that this podcast, you are listening on a mobile phone instead of your laptop or computer. <laughs> yes, yes, that is uh, that is uh, where the majority of our listeners uh, uh, use to to uh, sort of uh, tune in to us. And this is this is actually really good. I was actually also going to mention responsive and what do we mean by responsive websites um, and um, how how it how uh, how it is and what it is basically. So yeah, as you mentioned, uh, it is basically not just desktop and mobile, but also it usually has another version for tablets, which yes. are kind of yes. mobile, yes. but with bigger screens. Mm -hmm. So all of these different devices that you access internet, um, 
the website has to respond to wh whichever device you're using and adapt based on it. And this is um, something that we do seamless, seamlessly when we're browsing the internet. We don't think about it a lot. But any website you go to, including BBC, YouTube, wherever, you go um, in your desktop, you see a different version with different items and elements in one pl place. And when you go to your mobile, uh, you go to the same website, you different, uh, you see it differently. And even the menu bar uh, sort of is, it stays in a collapsed way in, in your mobile phone, et cetera. And some people actually makes, you know, some of the things available only in desktop or some of the things available only in mobile. So there is many, many uh, nuances in, in websites that happens based on this. So all of these things, the fact that the website can handle and have everything designed for desktop viewership, mobile and tablet, that's called a responsive website. And um, as again, going back to your analogy, which I think was a brilliant analogy about the house building, you know, the land is the hosting and the address is the domain. And then you're going to build the website, which is actually building the building. And WordPress basically is built a little bit of everything for you. Uh, so you, so do, it's, you do the interior design basically. <laughs> yeah. It, well, it's not just the interior. It also built the columns and the kind of the floors kind of uh, in a way. And, um, and then it did all of the electric and plumbing, not a lot of it, but a little bit of it and paved the way for you to build further. So it just, it basically, you know, um, you could say that from City Corporation, it brought down the plumbing or electricity line. And then that enables you to put electricity and water and everything in, in all so of So now your... you can install a dishwasher or a washing machine and then yeah. start using it and uh, yeah. 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 showcase, showcase the these... whole thing. And all of those things, I would say, are the plugins and uh, through which you can do all of these things. And now, uh, in terms of responsiveness, uh, WordPress already comes out of the box to a, a degree of responsiveness it already has. So basically, if you just install a theme and install, you know, write down all the details and the contents in the empty sort of placeholder places, texts and images, it would be responsive just out of the box. And then if you start to design your page, like exactly how you would like it, you add many things here and there, then at the same time, while you're doing it, you would have the option where you basically say, I want to make this make it look like this in a desktop and look like that this other way in a mobile. So you have that option to customize exactly how your website would look based on different devices, which is actually pretty cool. And a lot of, not a lot, all of those coding is, is taken care of by WordPress. So I would very much recommend it, um, recommend uh, using WordPress to anyone when you're starting and then you know, as you, as you know, if your business idea is more successful or website is more successful, then you can obviously, you know, grow from there, but, you know, start, build a website, one page static website today, and it will be responsive. So, so one of the things that I want to mention here is that Rinath has been advocating me to shift to WordPress ever since we met and known each other. He's like, <laughs> why don't you build a website? Why do you build it from scratch? And uh, I built my website during the pandemic just uh, when it started uh, because I just wanted to learn something new while I was logged in the house. Um, so that's uh, why I learned to build a website um, uh, and I get where Renat is coming from but I always looked at WordPress with some uh, like a skeptic's eyes because uh, I was always skeptical about the performance of the website. So the thing about WordPress is if you look at the source code which many of you won't uh, ever, uh, if you look at the source code of a website um, uh, a website is essentially a file, right? So a smaller file will load more quickly, a larger file will load a bit slowly. So that's the whole difference. And with pure HTML code, uh, the website loads much, much faster. Okay, of course, you have to spend a lot of time in uh, writing the code, maintaining it, etc, etc. But the code will load much faster because the file is very small. Now with WordPress, because it has this added complexity because it already has the framework. So Rinath mentioned about themes and plugins. Think of theme as the style, how it looks and plugins as adding functionality to the website. 
So you have the theme of how it looks and their functionality. Now all that has added baggage and that baggage makes the website very slow. So yes, so that's why I have I've not still uh, built my own website to uh, on WordPress because I am very finicky about performance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to completely disagree with you on that, Amit, because, uh, okay, first of all, the, the the point you just made is that uh, it's, it's faster to load. That is absolutely true. Factually, that is correct. Um, there is a few microseconds or milliseconds difference, no, but this huge. was... Even if it's a one second, I mean, I mean maybe for a static a website, yes, which is maybe a lot. For a static website, now, yes. Yeah, but now this was an issue uh, twenty years ago when uh, when people were having like kbps speeds, internet speeds. Now with mbps, it it is like near uh, like ignorable the difference of loading for that one second. But and then. But Rina, not then everyone nowadays, has fast internet speeds. Not everyone has fast internet speeds. Yes, but even then, with with the advent of new technology and new improvements happening every month in WordPress updates, there are plug. There is a plugin for that, which makes your website light to load the main parts, and then it loads the rest of them later in the background. So there is plugin to first of all make it lighter, and Overall, it is a lot lighter now, and and uh, you know, uh, for all intents and purposes, now even if there is one or two seconds extra delay uh, in loading the full website for the actual purpose of serving that information to the viewers, it makes very little it difference. Makes very little sense, yes. People are actually usually happy to wait that one extra second. Yeah, I I, so, I, I get where you're coming from. But I think I uh, appreciate that it was a really good learning experience for you. But I really still think that now you should take advantage of that learning that you have now as a foundation. Now you, I mean, for me, even uh, the the recent revamp I did in my website, it took me some time to understand everything in WordPress and I understand every all the sort of settings in plugins that but you would know that so much quicker because you have the foundational understanding of html and you could also amend the existing plugins to suit your needs which is something i can't do and i have to research which plugin will do what and what, what how but you don't need all of those and you can make so much more functional and uh, better looking website uh, a lot more quickly with WordPress. <laughs> well, uh, well, yeah, uh, yes, maybe I can. And uh, my brother-in-law, who actually makes plugins uh, for WordPress websites, he also tells me that um, you can get a very fancy-looking WordPress site up in like half a day, maybe, maybe less. And with so, with functionality, not just like just theme, but with proper functionality as well. Because uh, he has been building WordPress sites for a very long time, and he's saying that yes, it's it's a very powerful technology. It just for me uh, when I look at the source code, I see a very big file. I see a lot of plugins. It's it just added complexity to a very simple thing, and that's why static websites are becoming more popular. Yes, absolutely, that is all right. But uh, wh wh where I think you're going wrong is looking at the source code. You're not supposed to look at the source code at all. As a user, as someone, unless you're a web designer who has to like do like very little small nuances of changes, there is no need. I mean, the whole point of WordPress is that you don't need to look at the so source code at all. It's it's just a local. So why don't we do this for our audience? Why don't you guys go to both of our websites uh, and we'll have the link in the description and you guys probably already know amitsarkar.tech and mine is rinatmalik.com. So why don't you guys go to both of them and see how annoyed you were that my website took one more extra second and, you know, give us feedback on which website is good and how can we improve and, you know, use my contact form in my website to <laughs> send us an email or you can also also sort of reach us in, in you know, where, whichever platform you're listening to, all our details are there. But yeah, get 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 in touch with us. Tell us what's your thought on both of yeah. our websites and uh, how what can we do? I think I think what we should do is we should do a lighthouse report. So for the benefit of our audience, um, there is something called as lighthouse uh, built inside the Google Chrome uh, browser, and what it does is it does an audit of your website, of a URL. 
of a single page it it will not go through all if you have say 10 different pages with 10 different urls it will not go through that it will go through that url that you've specified so if i say amitsarkar.tech it will not go to amitsarkar.tech slash work slash education etc it will just go to the home page load it and see what the score is it will audit based on the load time the rendering time the security aspects whether it's accessible and what is the SEO content search engine optimized is it search engine optimized is it mobile friendly so it'll do audit and the same thing we can do it for renatmalik.com website and then maybe we can compare the results and what we'll do is in the description we'll mention the score for the lighthouse report for each of our home pages I'll not go through yes. all the pages but just the home page and let's see whose score is better well, there is, I mean, I, I only in, intentionally designed one page, uh, which is basically scroll down. So my home page is all of my pages, which might take a little bit longer, but I still am looking. I mean, the humans are going to be reading both of our pages. So I still would encourage our audience to give us your human uh, sort of um, uh, sort of feedback rather than and we'll we'll try the lighthouse response as well and see see in which way uh, uh, whose website is better in which way but it would be very interesting to sort of compare and hopefully you guys would also see a sort of side by side comparison of which which way to go for your own website if you want to go for WordPress or, uh, I mean, learning HTML is definitely a really good skill to learn. So absolutely would also encourage you to do that way. But uh, yeah, both of them are, are uh, good yes. routes to go through. But uh, yeah, I mean, um, definitely give us your feedback as well as you look for your, you know, for ideas for yourself. Um, you know, you, how can you know, you make better decision looking at both of our websites side by side. And uh, hopefully it will help you guys understand as well what, you know, the differences between HTML and WordPress, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I think uh, what uh, what I have noticed is that uh, because I had a lot of time during the pandemic, I think that's why I learned how to do everything. Maybe if I had if I would have to build up my website now, I would use something like WordPress because I don't have the time. I have a son. Uh, he's um, he's growing up so I spend more time with him now so I don't have that luxury of like spending a lot of time in learning how to code so maybe that's the reason I learned it during the pandemic uh, but if if given a choice maybe I would do it using WordPress I think WordPress has its advantages but of course we've talked about the performance and the security aspects of it but nevertheless um, WordPress has its advantages and uh, you should always explore uh, what you want to do is it about learning or is it about saving time and if it is about saving time which a lot of people want to do these days then I think WordPress is a very uh, powerful platform to do and by the way WordPress itself also provides hosting so WordPress also provides hosting on its own servers um, uh, we'll we'll mention the link uh, in the description, but WordPress also provides hosting, so you can use WordPress's own hosting to host your WordPress website. And uh, as Rinat mentioned, you have the Gutenberg blocks, so you can just drag and drop. So this is basically HTML code, but you don't have to code that particular element. Like if I want to create a paragraph, I have to write it in code, or if I want to create bullet points, then I have to write it in code. But suppose I just want a section of bullet points and just update the content, then I just drag that block, put it, and then it creates that uh, for me. Or if I want a web page with two different columns, then I can just drag a, a, a block with two columns and then add the content on it. So WordPress makes it very easy. And um, yeah, I think, I mean, no matter which side you are on, I think you always have to take a very good decision based on your own circumstances. So we are just educating you and maybe giving you ideas about how to use it. It's in the end, it's your website and how you want to build it. Yes, yes, absolutely. And hopefully uh, uh, you guys have a um, better understanding and awareness on how to how to proceed. Um, the, the important thing is that you go forward uh, through our talk, uh, you know, be educated and then take an action. Whichever way you go, that's up to you, but uh, do something. Uh, and that's that's what we encourage. 
And um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this this talk. We tried to go through all the basic features and what you can do with WordPress, as well as our our personal experiences. Hopefully this uh, inspired you guys to create your own websites. If you created one, or if you are inspired to create one from our talk and then eventually you create one do let us know do do let us know and we'll check out your website and then you know maybe we'll talk about it in our uh, um you know episode when you when when whenever that is and uh, we we definitely do look forward to to hearing about any what wordpress or html website you've built and uh, and and finding out how you how you went along so um yeah uh hopefully you guys enjoyed this conversation and we want to see you again in uh next week's topic and uh yeah that's uh that's more or less all i had to say for wordpress what about you amit so all i want to add is that uh, we have struggled to get feedback uh, and we were looking at options on how to collect feedback most of the platforms uh, that you listen to our podcast uh, like spotify and google podcast or apple podcast uh, they have no way to like um, uh, i mean give comments on each episodes so what we have done is we have added a link uh, of a google form uh, it's a feedback form and you can actually go to that feedback form and get in touch with us. I mean, you of course also already have our email addresses. Uh, so it would be very good uh, to get some feedback um, through that, or you can get in touch using, if you want to submit your feedback anonymously, you can do so using that feedback form. And um, we also have a page where you can get our podcast reviewed. That's Pod Chaser. So that's also linked uh, with all the popular podcasting platforms. So it would be good if you can do that. But uh, I hope you are uh, enjoying our podcast because uh, we are very passionate about technology. And as you can see, we have done about, I think, 75 episodes now. Um, and uh, there's no stopping uh, to our passion about technology. We keep learning new things and we keep building new things and we love talking about it. So please uh, do um, uh, share your thoughts and ideas about how we are doing. And thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, everyone. Bye.